submit yourselves then to God. See, all this stuff he's been talking about, that's the solution. The solution is not pray to God, straighten out the circumstances, and then everything will be just great. No, it's submit. Submit. That's what Jesus did. He said, not my will, but yours be done. There's two wills at work here. God's will to change us. Do you need changing? Anybody here that's like what God is going to? No, we've got a long ways to go, folks. We don't have anything to brag about. We need a Savior. We are truly sinners saved by grace. But I'm glad we're saved by grace, aren't you? I mean, I don't want to put the focus on the wrong thing there. It's God's at work in our lives. I want to be a cooperating so this is what the apostle is doing. He's recognizing realistically, these, these are things that go on among Christians. We squabble, we fight, we fuss, we have all these things go on at times. But God is just rubbing us together, bringing all these things out. He's not doing it to straighten them out, he's doing it to straighten you out. I need to be a committee of one to say, Lord, I submit. Even if, they're, I mean, even if the situation is completely unjust, I'm willing to trust you, Lord. Even if it looks like I've, you know, I really was in the right. I've, I'm being falsely accused, God. That's a tough one, isn't it? But oh, how much we strive for ourselves. When, you know, the, the psalmist dealt with the same thing. He said, God will bring forth your righteousness. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. He'll bring forth your righteousness. If there's righteousness there that, to bring forth, he'll, he'll bring it out. But he's wanting that self-will that's trying to make it happen our way to be willing to just let that go and say, Lord, I submit to you. And, of course, there's another side to it, isn't there? Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Boy, every time we exert our wills, we're just saying, I can't whistle, so some of you are going to have to whistle for me. I'm a terrible whistler, but just, come here, devil. That's a pretty pitiful whistle, isn't it? <laughs> but all we're doing is inviting the devil to come around and feed. What, is, what does the devil feed on? He feeds on flesh, doesn't he? Dust will be the serpent's meat. That's what we're made out of. I'll tell you, this is what... God has consigned him to do, to, to try to gratify his evil nature through us. Well, I don't want to cooperate with that, do you? But that's what he's going to do. If we let him, if we assert our will, all we're doing is feeding devils. And I want to do what James says here, submit to God. When the thing happens, submit. Boy, it would be so nice, wouldn't it, from our point of view, if God could just bring us to some crisis point and we could pass through that and find the victory and then whew, it's done salvation is, is happened it's all over no more battles no. as long as we're here you and I are going to be confronted by, by a wonderful faithful father who's going to be putting his finger on other things that still need work you know, I've watched saints of God get down toward the end and fight the same battles you and I fight. There's issues that, that come to light at that time of life. Oh, there's still so much of this that just wants its way. But my victory comes from submitting myself to God. And not only that, I need to recognize I got an enemy. Resist him. Talk to him. Tell him what's so. Tell him you're God's servant. You're not his. You recognize what he's trying to do and you're, you resist him. Quote the truth of God that affects your situation. And I'll tell you, if we do like Jesus did and we quote the word and we stand on that word in our spirits, the devil is going to, ha he doesn't have an answer to that. But he'll mess with you all day as long as you want your way, as long as you're stubborn about it. He's got access to you. As long as you're so focused on the other person and they're the, problem, they're the cause of my problems, if they change, I'd be all right. You're the one that needs the change. You're the one. And you don't worry about them. That's, that's God's problem. 
Wash, you know, come near to God. Come near to him, and he will come near to you. You want God to be near? You come to him with this kind of a spirit and this kind of a heart and say, Father, I love you. I want to please you. I want, I want to grow. I want you to have more of my life. Lord, teach me. Help me. Get ready. He will. But he's also going to come near, and you'll know him in ways that you didn't before. Wash your hands, you sinners. He's talking to Christians here, by the way. Let's not forget that. Wash your hands, you sinners. You people that are just, you're operating under a different principle that, that belongs to the kingdom of God. You're, you're doing things that are that, that, like the world does. You need to be cleaned up. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. You double-minded. Boy, we're pretty double-minded, aren't we? We acknowledge truths in here, and then we go out and we, we have a different mind, a different attitude towards life where we have to live it. And God wants us to be the same all the time. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning, your joy to gloom. you got somebody he's describing here that's so got such a head of steam for their own way, and they might even be glorying in it. They might even be sure that they're right. God's saying, you're way up here in your own mind. You think you're this, and you think this, and that, and the other, and you think you're looking down your nose at other people. You need to get right down here. You know, I said recently, if the Lord's presence really, really, really invaded this place, you know where we would be? We'd be on our faces. We would have such a sense of our unworthiness and our uncleanness compared to him that it would just level us. And if it weren't for God's love and mercy, that would kind of be the end of it, wouldn't it? But oh, it's a good thing when he brings us to that place where the only way up is to get down and to humble ourselves in his hands and trust him to do the lifting up. Praise God. Well, I think this is probably, you know, I had other thoughts, but I think this is probably enough today. I think I will read one thing. <laughs> it's a blessing. I don't know if it fits in here or not. Carl read this on Friday night. And then uh, it was just such a blessing to us. Because one other aspect of God's dealings with us is that things don't happen instantaneously. You know, we have a problem in that when God shows us a need in our lives, many times what we're seeking to do is, okay, God, I recognize this. Push the magic button. Make this go away. I don't want to be, I don't want to see it or hear it anymore. I want this gone now. Well, has anybody ever had it happen that way? It doesn't work, does it? And one of the main problems we have is the same problem that we observe in little children. They are filled with patience. <laughs> if you tell them to wait, they say, oh, sure. <laughs> no, we uh, don't wait very well, do we? But you know, that's part of God changing our nature. Part of real faith is the ability to let God do things in his time. Didn't we say that at the beginning? At the proper time, God did such and such. God brought conditions to be exactly the way they're supposed to be. And so this poem is one we need to consider from time to time, desperately. Helplessly, longingly, I cried. Quietly, patiently, lovingly, God replied. I pled and I wept for a clue to my fate, and the master so gently said, child, you must wait. Wait, you say, wait, my indignant reply. Lord, I need answers. I need to know why. Is your hand shortened? See, now we're blaming God. Is your hand shortened, or have you not heard? By faith I have asked, and I'm claiming your word. My future and all to which I can relate hangs in the balance, and you tell me to wait. 
You see what's going on? We're so focused on that and God's focused on this. We understand it goes a lot easier. I'm needing a yes, a go-ahead sign, or even a no to which I can resign. Lord, you promised that if we believe, we need but to ask and we shall receive. And now I wonder, do you hear my cry? I'm weary of asking, I need a reply. And quietly, softly, I learned of my fate as my master replied once again, you must wait. So I slumped in my chair, defeated and taught, and grumbled to God, so I'm waiting for what? <laughs> he seemed then to kneel, and his eyes wept with mine as he tenderly said, I could give you a sign. I could shake the heavens and darken the sun. I could raise the dead and cause mountains to run. I could give what you ask and pleased you would be. You would have what you want, but you wouldn't know me. You'd not know the depth of my love for each saint. You'd not know the power that I give to the faint. You'd not learn to see through the clouds of despair. You'd not learn to trust just by knowing I'm there. You'd not know the joy of resting in me you, when darkness and silence were all you could see. You'd never experience that fullness of love as the peace of my spirit descends like a dove. You'd know that I give and I save for a start, but you'd not know the depth of the beat of my heart, the glow of my comfort late into the night, the faith that I give when you walk without sight, the depth that's beyond getting just what you asked of an infinite God who makes resources last. You'd never know should your pain quickly flee what it means that my grace is sufficient for thee. I could make every prayer that you've prayed come true, but oh, the loss if I lost what I'm doing in you. So be silent, my child, and in time you will see that the greatest of gifts is getting to know me. Even though my answers might seem to be late, my wisest of answers is still but to wait. Do we have a wonderful Lord this morning? Do you get what he's trying to do for, for us? He is saving us. Salvation is a lifelong process. It involves surrender of our will. It involves faith and waiting on God and trusting in him completely. You got a better way? I don't. He's wonderful. He's worthy. And oh, to enjoy the peace that he gives all along the way. Praise the Lord. This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or a CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. DVDs are $10 and CDs are $5. And for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your request to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at this same time, and may God richly bless you until then.